All right, Kim, I always love chatting with you because we just have the best conversations. We do. Do you want to tell the audience who you are? I'm Kim Kenny. I'm the director of Workers' Comp for Loma Linda University Health. And I'm Dr. Cadet. I'm the founder of Ascend Occupational Medicine Consulting, and I am a board-certified occupational medicine physician. So, Kim, a few months ago, 2023, there was a survey among workers' comp stakeholders that said one of their top concerns is the physician shortage. They are projecting that approximately 130,000 physicians there will be a shortage of by 2030 and over 200,000 nurses by 2030. Mm -hmm. I believe it. Now, with such a shortage of work comp providers, because there's only about 2,000 board certified OC docs in the United States, what do you do at Loma Linda to recruit and retain top talent? I believe you all have 18,000 employees and six OC docs. We do. Um, one of the things that I do is beg a lot. It's not, it's not beneath me. <laughs> I really have been able to sit down with our doctors and explain to them the back end of workers' comp. Doctors are doctors and they're, they're treaters. And so they don't understand um, what happens on the mm -hmm. claim side. And they're the ones who direct so much, they spend so much of our money as the employer. You know, they decide temporary disability, permanent disability, does the person have um, permanent work restrictions? Are they able to go back to their usual and customary occupation? Do they have future medical care? Mm -hmm. So all of that's not a whole lot to them, mm -hmm. but all of that is cha-ching, cha-ching, cha-ching to me. So what I have been able to do is partner with our physicians, okay. especially our residents, to help them understand how important they are to mm -hmm. the entire world of workers' comp. Mm -hmm. and. And I think it really opens up their eyes with regards to, oh, I, you know, I am different. I am practicing a different type of medication. This is really impactful. Mm -hmm. And so that's one of the things that we do aside from begging a lot. I love that because when we're in medical school, nobody talks about no. occupational medicine. It's surgery, it's pediatrics, it's family medicine. I actually learned about Ahmed through the military. And you mentioned being attached to a residency program, and not everybody in the audience may be attached to an academic program where you have attendings and residents, but can you talk a little bit about what is the value of being able to talk to the next generation of op docs? Sure, so, so one of the things I do is just help them to understand that the medical practice in Oc Med is a medical practice, it's a specialty. It's not like family medicine or urgent care. Um, I explain to them all the different things that they need to do in being a really good Ahmed doctor. Mm -hmm. And when I can get to them as a resident, it, it opens up their eyes more to what happens on the other side. And then it also allows them to kind of not develop bad habits and not be so arrogant when you, know, you come to them as an employer after they've been doing medical treatment for 15 years and try to say you're doing it wrong, it's a little different message. When the residents come through, I love to tell them, oh, your family medicine, this is your op med pearl. This is the one thing I want you to get from this rotation before you leave. Just because the patient comes in and says their hangnail hurts and they can't yeah. go to work, that does not mean you need to write them off from work. So they're like, open sponges, ready to receive all the information. So I think your impact is huge. Thank you. Because you're really helping to shape good habits in the next generation. Thank you. I, I, I like to think so. <laughs> now you mentioned specialists. Augment is a specialty, but we also rely on orthopedics, neurology. Can you talk about what your interactions have been like with various specialists? Sure, so at Loma Linda, we have every type of specialty there is, and they don't do workers' comp. Mm -hmm. The specialty teams don't do workers' comp, but our Ahmed doctors depend on the orthopedic surgeon or whatever the specialty is. And so what we've been able to do is tell the orthopedic surgeons or the specialty physicians, you do what you're really good mm -hmm. at, tell the Ahmed doctor mm -hmm. what it is you've done, what you think, and then let the Ahmed doctor do the, the medical reporting. 
So it goes back to how important that Ahmed doctor is, especially in understanding that they are a specialty practice. There's been so many times when specialty notes have come across my desk and they have issued work restrictions that were not appropriate. And so being able to be in a collaborative environment where you can pick up the phone and talk to the specialist and say, hey, Bobby, it was just a hangnail. We really don't need to take her off of work for three weeks. And a lot of times they don't even realize that that's a mistake or that just because the patient asked for time off of work, if there's no objective evidence of an injury, you don't have to take them off of work, right? But that goes back to our bedside manner and how do we communicate with patients. If I'm very gruff, if I'm in a rush, the patient's not gonna receive that well from me. But if I take a few moments to just set expectations and say, hey, you fractured your ankle, mm -hmm. That typically takes anywhere from six to eight weeks, maybe 12 weeks to heal, but we fully expect you'll be able to get back to your normal life. We're not gonna take you off of work. We're actually gonna assign light duty. It makes the case go so much better. And then giving them a warning like, hey, you're gonna go see orthopedics. They may not understand this nuance, and they may issue a work note taking you off of work for three months, but you're gonna come back and see me, and we're gonna make some adjustments. So that way, when they see orthopedics, they're not totally thrown off guard by the fact that, hey, he took me off for three months and now you're putting me back. You really eliminate a lot of problems that way. This is true. And it's funny you say that because um, in Loma Linda, and I'm sure like in the Kaisers of the world, they have what's called patient satisfaction scores. Mm. And doctors really want to make sure that they get a high patient satisfaction score. And patient satisfaction score does not work well in workers' comp. Uh, so it's all the more important that there's collaboration between the Ahmed doctor and that specialty physician so mm -hmm. that there is an understanding of, you know, you do you and you do it really well and I'll take care of the off work notes and what have you. Mm -hmm. So as we talk about physician shortages, we lean a lot on other providers like nurse case managers. Can you talk a little bit about what that experience has been like for you? So nurse case managers, in my opinion, and I used to be an AVP overseeing nurse case management programs, they do a fabulous job with regards to uh, discharge planning from the hospital, um, you know, setting up things that need to be set up. I know that they will frequently go to the doctor's office and try to help explain return to work with the physicians. I, for La Melinda, what we do is we have a physician who is employed under me who kind of takes the role away from the nurse case manager to explain to the physician what ODG says and what estimated duration of disability is so that we can set that uh, standard up front and so that our expectations are better managed. And I, I mean, maybe I'm wrong, but I'm not quite sure if the nurse case managers do that or, or do it up front. So a lot of times nurse case managers are assigned at the end of the claim when it's already a disaster. Uh -huh. So I do see a lot of benefits in collaboration with the Ahmed doctor up front and we use a doctor coordinator who does mm -hmm. that. Because you and I have discussed a case that you all had where the worker had osteoporosis, yes. had a work injury where she fell on a soft couch. Yes that typically wouldn't cause any issues. When she fell on the couch, she fractured her femur and the treating provider kept her off of work for over six months, am I right? Yes. And so the benefit of having an OCDOC doc come in and review that file and say, hey, she had pre-existing osteoporosis. You've treated the femur fracture, which should take about eight to 12 weeks to heal. We're well beyond that. It is time to release her back to her PCP to address the underlying issue. You don't have to hold on to this claim for infinity. That would have saved you all a lot of money, would it not? It would, and it also would have set the expectation of healing with that injured worker, mm -hmm. which I don't think is done a mm -hmm. lot of the times. I think they're more, you know, they're referred to as injured workers. And lot, one of the things that we're trying to do, I think it was your suggestion, is that we try to refer to them as a healing, 
the, the healing yes, worker yes. so that they're not so caught up and focused on their injury, mm -hmm. but they are from the beginning getting ready to understand that this is just a hiccup in their right. life and it's right. not a new path for them. Exactly. Well, one of the reasons there's a physician shortage is doctors don't like being told what to do. Surprise, surprise. And they don't want to do a lot of the paperwork. Mm -hmm. Disability is very confusing. What has Loma Linda done to make it easier for physicians to want to practice within their workers' comp ecosystem? So for our doctors, it kind of goes back to setting the stage of expectations with them. When the doctor sees that patient for the first time, they'll issue what is a um, diagnosis code. Mm -hmm. So we take that diagnosis code and we run it through ODG and we produce basically like an expectation report back to the physician that says, based on your diagnosis for this employee, it should be this type of algorithm of treatment and we are expecting disability to last no more than 15 days. Mm -hmm. And then we send that to the doctor and if it goes beyond any of that, okay. we just wanna know why. So we'll follow up with them and get the diagnosis change. Mm -hmm. We can do a new uh, run through the program if that's the case. Otherwise, if that's not the case, we got a little bit of a problem because I'm sure you're an excellent physician and your treatment with them is, is over the top. It's not going to be less than. So uh, that, that's one of the things that we try to do. Well, can we give a shout out to ODG? Do we have any folks in the audience who work with ODG? I don't see any hands, but Kim and I love us some ODG, okay? I think if I had a magic wand, because mm -hmm. I don't like being told what to do either. So if I had a magic wand and I said, hey, you can go back through my history and you can see that I have consistently closed claims faster than what is outlined in ODG, when I order something for a patient, <laughs> please don't hold up my orders by sending them to utilization review. And I'll give you an example. I had a woman come in, she had low back pain. I could tell right off of the bat there were a lot of psychosocial issues in the background. Physical exam was objectively normal. She does not like her job. She is not hurt. I know she's not hurt. Her supervisor knows she's not hurt. This cookbook that people want us doctors to follow, it says I can't order an MRI right away, that I have to go through physical therapy. If I have a track record of fast claim closure, if I had a magic wand, it would be, you don't need to send my stuff and the other doctors who practice like me through utilization review because if you'll let me get the MRI right off the bat, and an MRI is what, 400 to 900 bucks, I can close the claim within the week. But if you force me to go through this cookbook, now I'm sending her to PT. Not just one round, maybe two rounds. The cost of the claim has already gone into the thousands. So if there's anybody out there in the audience who could make my dream come true, I'd love to talk to you after this. <laughs> So a lot of employers, particularly if you're self-insured, we're self-insured, self-administered, so what we do is we give our Ahmed doctors you know, these certain things that you can do as a pass-through, don't even bother us with yes. the utilization review process. We also go back to, you gave us a diagnosis based on what our review is of ODG, this is the treatment that is approved through ODG, go ahead and do it, so now they've kind of got the the pass-through care that they can do, and now they've got the care based on that, per that person's diagnosis that they gave us, they can do a lot without utilization review. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Kim, can we kind of pivot a little bit and talk about the comorbidities that drive physicians crazy and attributes partly to why they don't want to practice within workers' comp and why there's a shortage? Um, what types of things does Loma Linda do to help address comorbidities in order to close the claim faster? So Loma Linda is a Seventh-day Adventist organization and we are in Loma Linda, which is one of the five blue zones in the world. So what that means is that we do um, 
vegetation diets. Mm -hmm. We do a lot of um, emphasis on physical movement. And we also have a wellness program. So when our employees are injured and the doctor sees that they have all these other types of comorbidities, we've partnered with our doctors and with our, our um, wellness program to say, hey, if you see something that is going to prevent this employee from recovering, you can refer them to outside of work comp, you can refer them to the diabetes uh, wellness program, you can refer them to the Drayson Center, which is an amazing facility for exercise and all sorts of different types of physical movement yeah. and um, smoking cessation mm -hmm. so that they can mm -hmm. understand at least those benefits are there for them and it's free. So for those in the audience who don't understand the intersection of comorbidities and the claim, if someone is morbidly obese and they're coming into you with a knee injury, addressing the obesity is going to help the knee heal faster. If somebody comes to you with a back injury and they need surgery, there are many orthopedic surgeons who will not operate on you if you are a smoker. So if your organization has programs to address these things, such as obesity, smoking cessation, you are decreasing the cost of the claims at your organization. So one thing I had to, you know, I am a long time examiner from, from years and years. And so at first I was kind of like, don't mention their obesity. Don't put it in a medical report. Don't talk to them about their smoking. Because how many of us back in the 80s paid for all sorts of things that we should not have paid for? Thus, utilization review came into play. And now what we're able to do is just explain to the doctor that if it's said correctly and that they understand that it's different payers, then we get a much better outcome. And we're not stuck paying for the weight reduction program and, and all those other things that the patient needs to do before mm -hmm. they can have the surgery. Mm -hmm. I feel like pain and psychiatric issues are another thing that you guys do really well. When you have a patient with chronic pain, and, we, and some of the other speakers talked about opioid use and tramadol, one of the things that I admire about Loma Linda is they've actually partnered with pain psychologists who understand that pain doesn't always need to be treated with medications that are very harsh on the body. But when the provider's put in the order yeah. for said pain therapist, how are they wording that so that you don't inherit the depression, you don't inherit the bipolar disorder? Yeah, so that's one thing that will put me over the edge very, very quickly. Um, we, we all have psychosocial issues that we carry with us. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the, bag, the size of that baggage probably is different for all of us, but we still carry some sort of luggage baggage with us. So what we do is when an employee is seen and we get the information into our system, we put them through a risk assessment score. And based on the risk assessment score, we can then determine a partner with the Ahmed doctor to determine whether or not this person is likely to go sideways mm -hmm. with, um, you know, more pain than they probably really do have because of how their psychosocial system is understanding the pain. Mm -hmm. So when that score is something that we need to discuss, we'll discuss it with the Ahmed doctor, and then we can partner with a group who will do um, pain management from a psychosocial perspective, but yet not by a psychosocial claim. So it's been fabulous. And so Kim, I think we have a few minutes left. We've got 45 seconds. Can you kind of bring it home on what are some practical action steps that folks in the audience can take when they're faced with physician shortage and they need help closing out their claims? So I think the physician advisor or the physician consultant has been a, a great changing game for us. Um, somebody who understands Ahmed, understands the specialty, medicine that it is mm -hmm. and understands that this fingernail um, really is just a hangnail and somebody who can talk to the, the injured worker to let them know you're going to be okay mm -hmm. 
and we're going to work together to make sure you're okay. And hey, by the way, you know, you can take advantage of these wellness programs that on the side is going to help you yeah. not only heal, yeah. but also, you know, they're going to have an, an outcome with the work comp claim that will be a, kind of a blessing yeah. versus a complete diversion in their life. Excellent. Well, that concludes our panel discussion today. We thank you so much for your attention.